معنا في هذه الحلقة البوسر دانمار عندما التقينا معه وعرضنا له عوجه الأجاج العلمي في القرآن والسنة كان يندهش فقال هذا كتاب عجيب يصف لنا المر ويصف لنا الحاضر ويصف لنا المستقبل ولكنه كغيره من العلماء يقفون مترددين في أول الأمر ثم بعد ذلك يعلنون ما يعتقدون ولقد قدم بحثا في القاهرة حول الإعجاز في مجال علم الجيولوجيا ثم ختم تصريحه ختم بحثه هذا بقوله أنا لا أعلم المستوى الثقافي الذي كان عليه الناس في زمن محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا أدري في أي مستوى علمي كان فإذا كان الأمر كما نعرف عن أحوال الأولين والمستوى العلمي المتواضع الذي ليس فيه هذه الإمكانيات فلا شك أن هذا العلم الذي نقرأه الآن في القرآن هو نور من العلم الإلهي قد أوحي به إلى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فهو ذا ينهي بحثه بهذا التصريح We need research into the history of early Middle Eastern oral traditions to know whether, in fact, such historical events have been reported. If there is no such record, it strengthens the belief that God transmitted through Muhammad bits of his knowledge that we have only discovered for ourselves in recent times. We look forward to a continuing dialogue on the topic of science and the Quran uh, in the context of geology. Thank you very much. So, if we start, um, I'll ask you to say your name so that people will know who it is I'm talking to. So, could you tell me your name, please? My name is Pete Palmer. And I, is your alias Alison, open bracket, Pete, close yeah, bracket, right. Palmer? I was given, the given name was Alison. Yeah. My parents called me Pete from the start. Right, Okay. I wonder. I wondered why you chose Pete. I thought you know is that a name that you chose later, but no. They chose it because on their honeymoon they met a fisherman, an Italian fisherman named Peter Pipicelli, who they really thought was pretty neat. And and after they gave me this family name, the Allison is my father's name, and my his father's name uh, was involved. Uh, they said that's not a nice. That's not a name to call a little kid. And uh, no, they didn't like being anybody being called Al. And my middle name was already occupied by my mother's brother and by my one of my uh, cousins who were in town. So there were too many Ralphies around. So they just said they were going to call me Pete. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, right then. Um, now, you were featured um, in a video called This is the Truth, which was a recording of um, various scientists at various different events. Um, yeah. Now... What I'd like to ask you first was, um, what was your first point of contact in this whole affair? Well, the, the very first point of contact was the telephone call I received in January of 1985 from uh, Mustafa Ahmed, who was the North American representative of this uh, group headed by Zindani. And he uh, asked me if I would be willing to answer questions about uh, statements in the Quran that had some scientific uh, implications and I said yeah I'd like to do that and they said could we come out to Boulder he was in Chicago could he come out to Boulder and could we do a, 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 a meet and so I said yes and he arrived a few days later I don't know how long much later with a colleague and uh, with intentions of having me answer all this about 30 questions and I said wait a minute I can't give you honest answers to most of these because these aren't my field. But then we talked and I agreed to try to line up some folks who might help him where I could. And that was where we left that first contact, as I recall. Yeah, what was one of the people you re recommended was Bill Hay, is that right? Yeah, I recommended, yeah. I had to go, I mean, I, I, I didn't tell, tell Mustafa that until I had 
yeah. checked around. I, I had people I knew I thought might possibly be open yeah. to and having a conversation like this. I mean, most of my colleagues wouldn't touch any conversation regarding theology with a ten-foot pole. Yeah. So I knew Peter and, and I, knew, I knew Bill, and so uh, I checked with them and said, "Would they be interested?" And they, that sounded kind of fascinating. Yeah. Um, when they when they, during this phone call, and they were explaining um, the purpose. Yeah. Uh, now you you mentioned briefly what you said what they said the purpose was. Can you elaborate on that or what what they were saying was the purpose of this? Well, yeah, I don't exactly remember at which which one of several early contacts. Probably you know when he came out to my office, I wanted to know what the purpose more about this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose, as I understood it, was a a periodic evaluation of statements in the Quran to see how we understand those statements today in that the Quran had to be the Word of God and therefore uh, they wanted to know exactly what God had in mind <laughs> kind of you know. uh, and that was that was what I understood we were doing was to try to clarify how you understood these vague statements that were in the Quran in terms of modern knowledge right so by periodic then does that suggest that he was implying that this is something that they do every now and again. They, yeah. they look at the Quran, look at the words, look at what science says, and say, this is what the Quran must mean in that case. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it was kind of, um, it, it, well, effectively a retrofitting exercise. Would that be fair yeah, to I mean, say? I think it's perfectly okay. What, I mean, you look in the Old Testament, you get some of these vague statements. So what, yeah. you know, what, what would we, how would we understand how, they, how could they come by these statements? Mm -hmm. Where did they get the? How did they get this information? How did they get these impressions? Yeah. And uh, and so we told you know I said well yeah I'm sure the springs come out of the ground and the, the rain the water cycle we know a lot more about it now than they did but they had vague perceptions of these things. Yeah. Now um, during these early contacts, um, I believe that they invited you to um, an interview in Jeddah. Yeah. Um, uh, what? And they said that the purpose of this event in Jeddah was the same thing, I presume. Well, I don't recall what they gave me, what the what they specifically said about was the purpose, unless I wrote it in that document that I wrote after I got back. But I think they were gonna, they were basically vetting me, yeah, to see if I would could be a part of this dog and pony show that we ultimately created, yeah. that uh, went around. I think that actually probably uh, succeeded the. Cairo meeting. The first meeting was in Cairo a short distance time after I was in Jeddah. Uh, I, mean, I don't know, a few months, I guess. I don't know when it was. It was fairly soon after I was in Jeddah. Uh, I was invited to come back to Cairo, bring my wife, and be a part of this uh, conference. And I think that by then I had, I had the written text of, of what I was uh, yeah. trying to say. And I've got I, what I have yeah. now, my penultimate version. I have a whole bunch of versions without dates on them, so I'm not quite sure when they all came. But, but the penultimate version, which is uh, shortly before we, our last contact, is not that much different from what we started with. Just a few minor tweaks. Yeah. Always, always, uh, I would, I would, uh, you know, I, I would approve the, the, the text as I read it. Mm -hmm. Just I would, as I would read it, I would clear it with with Mustafa and say that that he understood, he knew what I was saying. It was okay with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I never, I didn't feel uncomfortable in the text because in the text I was basically saying there's a book we have to establish. That was the point of my text. We have to establish there was no way for this knowledge to have been extant because uh, almost all the things that that I was given uh, you could understand as being perceptions extant at the moment at the time of the writing of the Quran. Yeah. Um, after your initial contact, the co initial contact was January. Um, yeah. The Jeddah event, um, according to the document you sent me, was in August of the same year. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they did some. Um, they did so an interview with you in front of cameras. Oh yeah. Do you remember that? Um, oh yeah. And, and like, how long did that go on for? Do you, re do you recall? Oh, I, I think I may have written how I went on or parts of more than one day. I think it was a couple of days, but they had a, a video studio at the university, Abdul Aziz University, and in the studio were three or four of the geolog the members of the geology faculty at the university, each of whom 
had been a student of somebody I knew back in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were there listening to this conversation as I was being videotaped. Oh, nuts, here comes my phone again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, just carry on and I'll, I'll keep recording. Can you do that? I'll yeah, sure. Palmers. No, I'm, I'm in the middle of a long distance Skype conversation. I can't talk. Thank you. Ah, I hate this. <laughs> Money calls. They want, even on, a, even on a Saturday, they want to go and give you a contribution disc. Contribute that. Yeah. That sort of stuff. Sorry about that. That's fine. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, from your notes, um, it said that uh, when you were right in August, um, Zindani reinterpreted the English translations of the Quran in order to make them more geologically accurate. And then you would say in front of the camera um, what you and Zindani had agreed that this idea might imply. Yeah. Yeah, does that sound fair? I think that's right. Yeah, I, I don't remember the details of that, but yeah, mm -hmm. he, I mean, we had, I was trying to make sure that what he was getting <coughs> acceptable. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what we now knew, so yeah. Um, now, according to your notes, this uh, this m meeting ended with you being asked uh, an unexpected question. That I don't remember. That I was. Uh, did I say that? How could Muhammad have known? Oh well, they have, uh, they probably asked that, and I said I don't. I uh, you, we have to establish that. We don't know that. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I think that I think most cases he would have had to known, but we have to establish there was no way for him to know. Yeah, um, Zin, and then you also said that Zindani asked to help you um, to create the draft of a paper summarising the visit, which was going to be uh, presented in, um, in. I think that was the one you were going to present in Cairo. So Zindani helped you to go through the draft of that paper, did he? Yeah, we worked that draft back and forth, and I mean, it was Zindani and myself, and I think Mustafa was involved. Um, yeah. I think there were th we were co-authors, mm -hmm. and uh, as we were listed as co-authors, and we worked that over so that, that I was comfortable with the text, and they were comfortable with the text, and this, but it was a text that was essentially skeptical. Yeah. So the the purpose of this wasn't really to. Um to portray the um, the opinion that this is all miraculous information, and, oh, no. and it, it was it was supposed to be um, this is how we can interpret the meanings of these vague words, um, and uh, we but we've got to be sceptical about how people would have known this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, and there was nothing in the geological stuff that could not have been extant in knowledge in the Middle East. The only, the only part of all the various things we were given that was, was, was difficult, to under, difficult to understand as being extant knowledge was this embryological stuff. Yeah. Uh, but the geological stuff, all of that seemed to me was, was uh, you, could, you could kind of fudge it to, uh, to say that, that was, those experiences were the kind of experiences people would have in the Middle East. They, they could be known. There was nothing that precluded that. Mm -hmm. And of course, but, the um, the embryology part wasn't your field of no, expertise. No, but, but it, was a, it, it created an interesting question because how could you know uh, about microscopic things before, long before the invention of the microscope? Mm -hmm. So that, that was just one of those things I said, well, there's got to be an answer, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, okay. Um, was this a, a low-key event? I don't know. I, it was uh, the the one in Jeddah was low key. Mm -hmm. The one in Cairo was uh, they had a big audience. It was mostly medical people. Yeah. And of course, the big the big stuff that they were excited about was the was the embryological stuff. I don't think my stuff made much difference or much impact. But we during the time we were there, and I wish I'd written my notes down clearly. We I met uh, with. I don't know whether it was the Islamic Brotherhood, some major group. I met with the Secretary General of this group, and I had conversations with him, and I just don't find in my notes his name or anything. But we went to his home and went and sat around with a dozen people and had a, a conversation. 
that was kind of interesting, but I didn't write that. I didn't write down many of the details of that for some reason. But it was not. It was. It was. It wasn't directly related to the conference. But it was while we were in Cairo. I had this opportunity to have this this meeting and conversation. And I don't know whether it was the Arab League or exactly what. I don't remember what it was called. And I can't find a note that tells me. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is the um, Cairo meeting, isn't it? That happened yeah, then late in, late September to early October. I yeah, think that was the same. Cool. Yeah. Um, um, the uh, at the end of the event, the you was uh, you all had a nice time at King Farouk's weekend palace, I believe. I don't remember the palace. I remember that there was uh, some kind of a, of a good dinner banquet. Yeah. I don't remember where it was. I, the only palace I remember was in Islamabad when we were in uh, Zia Al Haq's palace <laughs> and, and had a lecture. He gave a lecture to the whole group. Yeah, and we stayed for dinner, and this it was a spectacular, really neat event you know, to do that but that was that was in that was in Islamabad that was the next conference actually I, I remember um, I remember when I was talking to Bill I think it was you he said that he was with when um, you noticed that there were no women present at the meal yeah, or yeah. something is that yeah and well, well what was interesting there was one woman that we talked to who was the uh, the sort of, I don't know, what is vice president for education in Pakistan or something, you know, well up high in the government, but it was a woman. And she and Pat got to, my wife got talking, and uh, we found out that she was very uncomfortable about coming to this meeting because it was all the men, you know. Mm -hmm. she, felt, she felt uncomfortable about it. And we, we, we found that was kind of interesting that she didn't, even though she was very high up in the government, she felt uncomfortable being in the in the conference, uh, I think the women were there because at 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 the Zia Al Haq dinner, there were the wives of, of myself and and uh, Peter Hildebrand and uh, this lady. Uh, they had a separate table mm -hmm. in the dining in the dining area at in Zia Al Haq's palace. Yeah, but she said the, the woman said she was pretty uncomfortable uh, being included in a sense because it was somehow not. Muslim, right? Um, now, there was a. Oh, but, the wife okay. just. What's fine? Can you hold yourself. What's, what's yes. up? Okay. Do you, need, right. do you need to do you need to end early and do this another time or? What's that? Do you need to uh, do you need to end this early and do it another time? No, it's I'm okay. Fine. Um. Now this affair in Cairo, I believe, it ended with a bit of a furor um, when you made a suggestion about the implications of Muhammad's illiteracy. No, no, that was us, Islamabad. That wasn't. Oh, that Cairo. was. I oh, was it Islamabad, um, yeah. and that was after Cairo, was it? That was after Cairo. And, and exactly, yeah. when, I don't know whatever dates they were. We uh, we went to Islamabad, and that was the conference where I s responded to a couple of Egyptians. Who, when I suggested that that we have to know that there was no way for Muhammad to have been involved in this, and they stood up and challenged me and said, "Well, but Muhammad was illiterate." And I said back, "There's a difference between being illiterate and being stupid." And I think he was probably a very brilliant man, and that uh, got me in trouble. Rescued partly by a, a jet black Somali Supreme Court judge who was trained in England at perfect uh, Oxford English, who stood up in the audience and said, uh, "He's right." <laughs> we have to know that that there was no way for this knowledge to have been extant in Muhammad's time. So the audience was that was a big audience. That was several hundred people there, a couple hundred people at least, and and uh, most of them were just hanging on these words about the embryology. And my stuff was pretty much peripheral because I didn't have anything that they really could hang a, a case on. Yeah. Now, at, at the end of these uh, these events, Indani created this. Uh, this video collection called This Is The Truth, which yeah. um, in summary is supposed to be um, a large collection of Western scientists that had studied the Quran and all come to the conclusion that um, either that they thought it was from some divine origin or that they were absolutely dumbfounded as to an explanation but weren't quite prepared to make that leap. Um, in your case, um, what he says, I had someone translate it for me, um, it says, um, I 
I don't know the cultural level which the people at the time of Muhammad, peace yeah, I got that quote here, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, I don't, uh, that quote, yeah, I got that here. I know the cultural... Just before... Is that just be a quote for me? Yeah, just before you reply to that, can I... Can I just read it out for the um, sake of the recording? So oh, that, sure. Yeah, so that people know what you're responding to. It says that you don't know what uh, level the people were on at the time, um, but if the position is, um, and we don't know, um, that basically that these people couldn't have known these things, um, it goes on to say, there is no doubt that this knowledge which re we read now in the Quran is light from the divine knowledge that has been revealed to Muhammad. That's not me. <laughs> not me. I never would have said that. So you, at no point did you suggest that there would be no doubt that this information in the Quran is from a divine origin? Oh no, because I was, I was a, a total, I mean, I, I totally didn't believe that that was, there were rational explanations for everything. Yeah. Just understand how we explain a couple of them, but that didn't mean that for, that that was there for divine knowledge. I think we had to look for, be sure there was not an explanation, and the one mystery was the embryonic stuff, and I found an explanation that satisfied me anyhow. But that was long after we'd finished. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it, I, I thought this part of the this uh, the video was a bit suspicious because if you had said that there's no doubt that this is information from a divine origin, that yeah. they would have said, look what he said next, and then put the video footage on of you saying those words. But we, effectively, the most juicy part of what you were alleged to have said wasn't shown, and Zindani simply presented, oh, by the way, after that, he went on to tell me that he thought all of this was probably from God. So I always thought that bit was a little bit suspicious, just to say the least. <clears throat> I never, I never, to my to my knowledge, uh, believed that that this had a divine origin. It had a it had a rational human origin. Um, an another thing that I actually remember um, reading from that script is that you were apparently astonished by the accuracy of the information in the Quran, and you said, "What is this wonderful book?" <laughs> Doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> Um, the, I believe that the information that he asked you to look at was um, something about the lowest point. Yeah, I mean that was that was in the first interview in Jeddah. Yeah. Where they they had this because uh, I had brought my globe with me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm familiar with this globe. It's a really neat globe. It was put out by the National Geographic probably 40 years or more ago. But uh, they had this statement, and they were right there printed on the globe was lowest point on Earth, and so. I said that's that's kind of neat that they uh, that the Quran mentions that, but uh, it doesn't prove anything particularly because they just happen to be in the right area. Yeah, I mean, what what would you describe? Uh, how would you um, explain that information being within the possibility of human knowledge at the time? Is that something that you would be able to see? Um, you would be able to look around and say this looks like it's the lowest place in the region. I mean, if the people of that time, I think, yeah, that was that was probably uh, known that that was the lowest point in their era, their world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it just happened that the Quran had it right, but it wasn't because uh, uh, it was a bit of divine knowledge. That was a bit that was merely the Middle Eastern uh, state of the Union. Mm -hmm. they, the, the, it was possible that it was known locally as the lowest place. Yeah, sure. And um, I seem to remember we discussed this before, and you said something about it's possible to see that it's lowest place because it would be the only place where you can see that you're lower than sea level or something. Does that sound familiar? Uh, I don't recall saying it quite like that because I I wouldn't know. Uh, I probably didn't think about it. how would they how would they measure it except they you know because. They would have to have some way of of getting some crude measurement that said this was lower than the the Red Sea, mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's all. They just figured that they had some sense of elevations by then. Maybe the Romans had done that. Yeah. Uh, so they had that. They had that knowledge, but I didn't. Uh, I don't. I never was 
I thought it was just kind of neat that, that they had it that they had it as the lowest point and that's what the globe showed it. But that didn't mean anything else. Um, <coughs> I mean, really this is this is basically the end of my uh, of my prepared questions. Um, okay. So uh, th there's a few questions that I'll, I'll ask which are a bit silly, but I have to ask these because of the kind of responses I've had to my other interviews. Okay. Uh, so uh, the first one. Um, um, did you become a Muslim? No. Okay. Um, have you been paid by me or anybody else in order to participate in the interview that we are having now? No, not a bit. Have you been intimidated by anyone uh, to retract your original statements? No. Um, I mean, I'm, that my original statements, as as you've got them, may not be quite accurate, but that I haven't been intimidated by anybody. Um, are you? <laughs> are you in fact an imposter? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Uh, uh, I don't know. I, su I, I suppose. Mean, could, could could you possibly be um, an actor with a latex mask on? <laughs> no, 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 I did all that stuff. <laughs> <coughs> uh, I had to ask you that one because I, I have actually been asked how do I know this isn't an actor with a latex mask on? <laughs> sure, I mean that's fair enough, but, but I don't know how you how you could prove it's not. Well, can, you could pull it pull at your face or something. Yeah. But no, I don't think we'll go down that route. Um, now, what struck me with um, with this whole whole um, series of events was that different scientists went on um, went to different venues at different times and they all seem to have had different experiences um, in Bill Hayes case he was told that he was trying to um, he was trying to help the Mullers uh, feel more comfortable about science and to convince them that their religion said that they should really be embracing science um, Alfred Croner said that you had the meeting he went to had nothing to do with religion whatsoever it was just a geology uh, meeting and then they sprung some cameras on them and asked them lots of leading questions um, in your case um, it seems to be um, the probably the very initial point of contact um, where they were saying that they're reviewing the meanings of the Quran to make sure that they've got them correct uh, that they're matching them up to what science says now. Um, because you did a kind of um, a pre-written talk, a prepared talk, it's, um, it's obviously not been so easy to quote mine you. Um, and you haven't actually had any people write to you and ask, do you believe that the Quran is from God? Is that right? No, no, never. It's, yeah. it, your, your experience is really in contrast to other people because... Um, Alfred, for example, said that he's had hundreds of people write to him, and he, he had a, a pre-written copy re, copy paste response. It, it's a dear XXX, and then the explanation. Um, yeah. Bill said that he had quite a number of people because Bill was obviously quote mine saying, "I think it must be from the divine being." Um, so obviously, these other people have been uh, quote mine. So my purpose really in talking to you was. Um, because you seem to have been the initial person that they contacted, I was really kind of interested in um, the origins of this affair, um, what they originally said it was for, um, how other people got involved and so on. Um, yeah. It's been really interesting having you explain that to me. Um, it's been really interesting hearing about your experience of uh, when you flew out. And it seems that you have, uh, you've been flown out to various places on quite a yeah. number of occasions as well. Oh, it was wonderful. I mean, it was not, you know, I, I, it's way to go. First class air return air flight from Denver to Islamabad. Yeah. Don't mind that a bit. It's a long flight. Uh, I think the only one, the only meeting that Bill Hay was at was the Islamabad meeting. I don't think he was at any others. I think he, he said he... Oh, I don't, no, I don't really recall. There was one I missed. It was in Moscow or somewhere in Russia that I was not able to get to. Oh. I've never heard of a Moscow one. There was one. There was one after. There was somewhere in between. I had a conflict. Just couldn't go to it. But it was. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was somewhere in in maybe just in the Soviet Union. Maybe in the Islamic part. 
Mm -hmm. I don't remember where it was. It could have been in uh, in uh, Kazakhstan or Tashkent or something like that. But I didn't go to that. So, and I don't seem to have the correspondence about that in my folder. Yeah. But, and Bill might have been there. Mm, yeah, he didn't mention Moscow. I haven't heard of that. I think he mentioned. He definitely mentioned Islamabad and mentioned long boat trips and things. And I, I don't really recall. I, I was under the impression. I thought he went to Jeddah as well, but I'm probably mistaken. He might have gone but after me because at the time I went to Jeddah, they didn't have those contacts. I hadn't made those contacts. Yeah. Okay. Or at least I don't. I, maybe I'd made them, but I didn't. I had. We didn't go at the same time. If we went, if he went. Um, in the, in a summary, do you think that it would be fair to say that your opinion on this entire matter has, seems to have been misrepresented? Well, as you present it to me, yeah. uh, it seems like in some cases I've been misrepresented. Yeah. Fortunately, I have the text of what I read in all those meetings, mm -hmm. and I didn't deviate. You know, I didn't didn't deviate from that text in my presentation and in the question answers. Uh, I didn't get. I I always said, you know, we have to we have to establish that there was no way for this knowledge to have been extant at that time. And do you in any way endorse the proposition that the Quran could only been, have come about through some supernatural origin? No, of course not. Right, okay. And finally, um, just for, um, to cover myself legally, do you give me permission to make the contents of this video recording public? Yeah, I kind of would like to see it. Yeah. But you got to public before you do it. Well, what I'll do is I'll... Um, it's going to be uploaded in its entirety unedited so it's going to include people phoning you up to ask you about financial matters and things it, it'll all be there because I, I literally want it to remain 100 percent uncut um because the, the name of the channel on youtube is this is the truth uncut so i, I can't really edit out the phone call because of the, then it'll be cut so okay. I'll, what i'll do is i'll upload it and um i'll let you have a look at it first and if you're not happy with it and you want me to get rid of it, that's fine. And if you're happy with it, then I'll make it public. Okay. I mean, I I enjoyed my contacts with everybody involved. Yeah. In this, I so I and I I you know I wasn't vehemently uh, trying to contradict them. Mm -hmm. But I was just saying that that from my point of view, we we didn't we have to have conclusive evidence that there is no way for this to have been extant knowledge. Yeah. And we didn't change that. We had a lot of, you know, private conversations along these lines without, I mean, they, we just kind of agreed to disagree. And I think in the New York Times piece, uh, which Don Golden wrote, Dan Golden wrote, uh, I'm, Sindani is quoted as saying, I was the one who wouldn't commit. Right. There you are. That's, that, so, that, that was accurate then. That was accurate. Yeah, definitely. I think the thing is, though, is it wasn't entirely accurate because... Um, I haven't actually yet spoken to a scientist that did commit. I've spoken to about five or six on the phone. You're only the third video interview I've done so far. Um, yeah. And so far, every single one of them said that just wasn't my opinion at all. Um, so it would seem that you weren't the only one that wouldn't commit. Maybe what he really meant was uh, the others were much easier to make it look like they'd committed. They made it they were more tactful, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they were a bit more polite, I think, maybe. <laughs> right, okay. We had very frank conversations. I mean, yeah. I, because uh, I, I, I don't mind discussing theology with theologians. That's, I think mm -hmm. I enjoy that. Yeah. And so I, we had discussions about where I came from and why I thought the way I thought. And, and uh, uh, that was okay. Mm -hmm. So I never felt I was being sort of argued with or twist had my arm twisted or anything no. like that. No, no, doesn't sound like you were. But as long as, uh, as, long as people realise that um, if someone uses you as, um, as an authority on the, um, the information in the Quran regarding geology and that you as this authority say, you've really, really got to be impressed by this, you know, you should be quite convinced that this is um, this is beyond the ability of a seventh-century human. That they know that, that this isn't something that they should be listening to. 
No, I never, I never implied that at any point. That's brilliant. Right, okay, thank you very much. Um, You're welcome. Pete, Pete who na- hasn't got the name Pete in his real name <laughs> anywhere, <laughs> Pete Palmer, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Thank you.